Acts chapter 1, if I didn't say that already. I want to read verses 1 through 8, and then we'll just uh, teach you a little bit about something I learned. I think it'll help you as a church. Um, what I titled this is How a Church Can Reach the World. How a church and one church can reach the world. Acts chapter 1. <clears throat> Let's stand together while we read the word here. I'm going to read the first eight verses, and I'm sure your pastor has uh, preached on these verses before because he's a soul winner. And uh, that's, that's, that's important, and, and, and we start here. Um, the former treatise have I written, uh, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to both do and teach. And, and by the way, that's good leadership. Do and teach. Okay, both those things matter. Until the day which he was uh, uh, taken, up, uh, taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen. And I'm not preaching on this, but I want you to notice that Jesus did his ministry through the Holy Spirit. He, didn't, he did it as a man. He's 100% God, we understand that, but he's also 100% man. And when he did his ministry, he had to pray. He was filled with the Spirit, and he did his ministry through the power of the Holy Spirit to be our example, to show us that's how we have to do it. Um, through the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom uh, he showed himself alive after his passion um, by many infallible proofs, having been seen of them 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Uh, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, he asked, uh, they asked of him, saying, Lord, when wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. <clears throat> They're asking him, when are you going to restore your kingdom? They want to see the Messianic kingdom set up. They were thinking politically. And by the way, the Christianity has gone back to this. Christianity is so worried about politics. Oh, the election is going to go wrong. The wrong person's in office. And, and people are so freaked out about that. <laughs> Listen, uh, the powers that be are ordained of God. Uh, relax. You know, they, they, well, you don't know how bad the authorities are. Look, they said the powers that be are ordained of God underneath the Roman Empire that was slaughtering Christians. But God, we'll see that God used that. God's smarter than us. Okay? They wanted to see the kingdom of God done uh, there, there on earth right now. It is not for you, you to know the times, the seasons. So you're, it's not for you to know when that's going to happen. Only the TV preachers know that stuff. And, uh, and, uh, <clears throat> in verse 8, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this great church, Lord. I've already been encouraged just listening to them, seeing their attitudes, listening to our brother talk about how he uh, has been praying and you gave him a soul to witness to and and the song and the, and, and just the the good spirit of the church, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the good report with pastor's uh, health, Lord, and we thank you um, for all these uh, blessings. Lord, we, we need you tonight. Without you, we can do nothing. And uh, so we pray that you'd fill me with the spirit, speak your words. This church has a great zeal and uh, a heart for the world and uh, for this area and for this state. And we pray, Lord, that you would tonight give power and encourage them and give us all wisdom and help us to learn. We need you, and we ask for your help in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. <clears throat> a bunch of things here. Um, there's one church here at this time. There's one church in the world. Imagine that. If that is Emmanuel Baptist, just stop for a sec. What if Emmanuel Baptist Church was the only church on earth, and the Great Commission was given to you? This church was one church of 120 people. Understand, when Jesus' ministry was done, he left behind a church. That was his ministry, what was left. And he left behind a church of 120 people. A lot of people think he had a church of thousands and thousands at the end. No, he had thousands and thousands in the crowds that came around him. But when he was done, it's 120. 
okay? That's what Jesus had left. Uh, let's uh, just look at that in verse 15, just to show, show, show it to you. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of names together were about 120. <clears throat> it's not a super big church. 120 people and the entire responsibility of Christianity and the gospel and God's word is on them. One church. What happened to the crowds? He fed 5,000 here and he had multitudes there. Uh, well, let me take you to John and we'll just swing back there for a second. Let me just show you what happened. Uh, what happened to the crowds. See, a lot of people come to hear, but not a lot of people want to really follow. You can get a crowd together in a church until something's demanded of people. Or until the message gets a little too hard. You guys, I'm sure, have the, the churches that are fun and, and have huge crowds. And the preacher preaches something out of the Bible that's very nice. And... You can go there forever, and you can make business contacts and have a good program. They have a, this club and a, that club, and everything's really fun and nice, and, 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 and everything's entertaining. And, and, and then they leave that church at some point and come to our churches. Whoa. Well, I'm not that serious, man. I just, Sunday morning, just... And, and what do you mean? I, what do you mean... You want me to go witnessing? I pay the preacher. And, and, uh, the, the, and it changes. You can have a lot bigger crowd if you just don't demand anything. Don't preach hard. Don't do this. The average message in America right now is under 20 minutes. Yeah, that's yeah, me, me and you both, brother. And... Uh, and and <clears throat> good really all right i'm good we're good tonight then and uh, and so we go to john chapter six we'll see this because it happened to jesus and he's a pretty good pretty good preacher john six verse two and a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased so he's got a big crowd awesome they saw something, but it was they wanted to see the show. Look at verse 60. Many, therefore, as his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? Why? Because throughout the chapter, he started teaching and preaching. And they said, What? Well, no, the miracles are cool. Okay, uh, enough. Okay, anyway. I, uh, you know, the mar I like seeing those healings, those demons getting cast out. That's awesome, man. This is great. You want me to do what? He that loves his life will lose it? Whoa. Seek ye first the kingdom of God? Uh, I'm not sure I like that. That's a, who can hear it? That's difficult. Uh, you go to verse uh, 66. And from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Many of his disciples... He said, I'm, this is hard. No. Who wants hard? It's weird. It's a weird an athlete will, will like hard to win a championship. I always love when he gets some macho guy when he's with the player on his team, on the football team. He's, he's, he gets tackled. He doesn't try hard enough. And he's screaming, what are you doing? This is, you got You don't go down like that. And you say, hey, man, you need to read your Bible. I don't know. I'm kind of tired. Well, you had a lot of passion for that football game. For that basketball game, man. You look like you had energy, a lot of energy when they called that bad call in Kentucky basketball. You look like you, you had passion in you. Then all of a sudden it's like, you need, you need to go to church Sunday morning and Sunday night. Oh, brother, I'm tired. I don't know, man. That's hard. And Jesus said, yeah, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And, and follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. And, and people didn't like that. 
And from that time, uh, um, there, uh, there, uh, many of his disciples went back and walked no more, no more with him. One of the saddest questions in the Bible is verse 67. He turns to the 12 and said, will ye also go away? So he didn't have the 5,000 anymore or the 10,000. He was, he was down to 120, but they're pretty devout. And it's amazing what when somebody's serious, when somebody, you get a crowd together that's really in it, what God can do with them. And so we go back to uh, Acts chapter 1 and uh, see that's our 120 we're going to start with. And uh, <clears throat> you guys got that whooped by a lot. You got more than 120. And so you can... You can you can do a lot. This church is given the great commission, verse 8. But ye shall receive uh, power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and in the uttermost part of the earth. A couple things. People read over verses quickly and don't understand. God chooses his words carefully. He says, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. He, he could have left that word both out, okay? He should be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost part of the earth. But he said both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. This is, this is what Jesus, the last thing he's saying, he's going to ascend in a minute, and he's going to go up to heaven. The last thing he's saying, he's saying, you're going to be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, the uttermost part of the earth. You're going to do that. Both means this and that. And so this church is given the Great Commission. Now, this Great Commission, Jesus, after his resurrection, he's, there's, there's all these appearances. And on multiple occasions, he gave the Great Commission a little bit different every time. This one here, um, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost part of the earth. It starts there in their hometown. Then it goes out to the region around, then farther, and then to the uttermost part of the earth. Matthew 28, he says, teach all nations. Mark 16, preach the gospel to every creature. So it's a little different every single time. One time you've got uh, Jerusalem, your local area, then expanded out all the way to the end of the world. Another time, he's got all nations. Another time, he says to every creature. It's all, it's all a big challenge. Okay? But it's given to them, and they've got this thing, and they've got that, the, the, the command of what to do to every creature. What a job. But, turn to Acts chapter 17, this church did it. But I'm going to show you the mistake they made. And this is a mistake 99.5, literally, percent of churches who are trying to do this thing make. And I'll get that in a little while. I'll get you to that. Acts 17 and verse 6. And when they found uh, them not, uh, they drew unto them Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, saying, These are they which have turned the world upside down. The, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. It turned the world upside down. One church. There they are. And that's what, look, um, most churches are, don't, most churches don't witness at all. If we're doing good, a church nowadays will preach a gospel in the services, and so they'll have people walk the aisle and get saved. And praise God if they do that. A lot of churches don't even do that. But that's actually not the biblical pattern. The church, just so you know, and this is not the message, the church's job, Ephesians chapter 4, is to prepare the people for the work of the ministry. They go out into the highways and hedges and bring their converts back to the church to be discipled. That's the biblical pattern. Uh, that, that's, that's what they did in the book of Acts. That's what Ephesians 4 and many other passages teach. What we think is that, that they're supposed to come to church to get saved. In my area, they don't go to church. They don't walk the aisle because they don't go to church. We have to go soul winning to them. Okay? And that's God's pattern. And then you bring them to the church. The church is for discipleship of believers and preparing them for the ministry. Okay? You see the salvations. You, you, you go to the woman at the well, the Ethiopian eunuch. Just your soul winning stories in the Bible. They aren't in church. That's, that's being a soul winner. And again, I'm glad if somebody comes to church and gets saved. Praise God for that. If they're going to come, preach to God, and, and, and wonderful. But they're really, 
they got their own church and that church doesn't preach a gospel they won't go to church that you know we got to go to them and 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 luke 14 and other passages you can you can look at that on your own but <clears throat> they did it i want to just say how they did this now all that to get to this how do they turn the world upside down how did this one church you're in church today because of that church so am i our church this one church of 120 reached the world and got christianity everywhere so how do they do it that's the message introduction uh number one um they got they got going <laughs> okay we see verse eight he gives them the, this is the funny this is so humorous they you should receive power after that the holy ghost goes come upon you, you should be witnesses unto me and when he has spoken these things he ascends up into heaven verse eight verse nine verse ten and then he's up into heaven and they're staring he goes in the clouds And angels are standing around going, um, guys, he just told you what to do. Finally, the angel says, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you shall so come in like manner. He's coming back. Get going. <laughs> Stop staring. Quit looking around and... and, 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 and it's nice to look at Jesus and then say, boy, isn't he wonderful? Okay, let's go tell someone. They got going. They went back to Jerusalem. They were told, don't do any ministry until you're empowered. And they began to pray. For 50 days, they began to pray. For that power, they were told they would have to have. Luke 24 says it's also, um, but tarry you in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. You're not going to be able to do this thing in the flesh. You're going to need my spirit to do it. Pray, get the power of the Holy Spirit. And then, then, uh, then they, they, they went and did that, and they prayed, and then Pentecost came, and they had that. Number two, they had to divide in order to multiply. Super important here. <clears throat> this is the hardest thing for churches to do. I preach pastor's conference all, all over the world. And when, it, when I train pastors and teach pastors, and when pastors talk to me a lot, I say, I teach them this like, ah, oh, I don't think we can do that. That, because this is hard to do. But you need to, to divide in order, order to multiply. Let me just kind of uh, follow this, um, through this through, through the start of the book of Acts, uh, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria. <clears throat> You're starting... Uh, here in Florence, you're going to the county, and you're going to go to, you know, maybe Cincinnati, maybe down to Lexington, and then you're going to expand farther, and then America, and then the uttermost part of the earth, okay? That's what your job is to do, and, uh, and, uh, and us where we are. This is where most churches, including the Jerusalem church, this church messes this up. And I'm going to show you, God fixed it because they, God had to have this church have it right if they didn't get it they didn't get it right uh, Acts chapter uh, uh, 2 um, they're filled with the Holy Spirit and they pray they did what they're supposed to do and they're and uh, they're all filled with the Holy Spirit in verse 4 and uh, and that's wonderful and then in Acts chapter 2 <clears throat> you go down to verse 41 and you see the awesome news and they that uh, that were uh, that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls Awesome. Great start. 3,000 souls saved and baptized. They're doing wonderful. They're doing great. They're reaching, they're reaching Jerusalem. Chapter 4 and verse 4. We've got, uh, Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, the number of the men were about 5,000. How many have we got so far? We got 8,000. Okay, under persecution Christians that are coming to church. We find out they're going to church daily. They're, they're really into it. We've got 8,000 so far. Back to Acts chapter 2. And, uh, and we see in, in, those are the big chunks we see there. Uh, and we saw in, in verse 41, um, 3,000 are saved and baptized. Verse 47, uh, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added unto the church daily such as should be saved. Now we've got people getting saved every day. Added to the church. Okay, we're going to go out about three years. <clears throat> Let's add another thousand. 
Okay, we've got 9,000 now, right? Pretty good sized church. And they're having a great time. They're loving it. Look, look, at, look at verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. They're going to church. They're loving it. They have a great, great spirit. Acts chapter 4, um, verse, 20, verse 23, and, great, uh, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace is upon them all. They're doing awesome. They're encouraged. They love it. They have a, a joy. Uh, verse uh, 32, uh, they're all of one heart and one soul. Great church, united church. Happy church, church full of grace, church is thriving. They, they're, they're praising God. They, they're just, it's, it's tremendous. And, and Jerusalem church is a big church, but it gets bigger. Uh, chapter 5 and verse 14. <clears throat> and believers were added, uh, were the more added to the Lord. Multitudes of both men and women. What's a multitude? Well, they, they listed 3,000, they listed 5,000. So how big are we so far? We're at 9,000. Now we've added a multitude. Let's say 5,000 was listed, let's say 6,000. We're at 15,000. You can have people guess, nobody knows how big Jerusalem church was. Some people think it was 100,000 people. But... I don't think it was that big. I'd, I'd, I'd guess around 20,000. And they're doing great. Big church. Thriving church. Happy church. Spirit-filled church. Soul-winning church. <clears throat> awesome. Where are they? Where else? They're in Jerusalem. And... They're doing great. And here's the thing. Churches think if we are growing and people are being saved and, and we're having a great time and we have good fellowship and we have a, a great spirit and, 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 and lives are being changed, we're doing great. And you are in your, your little world. But there's 8 billion people. And and just because you get bigger and bigger and bigger, look, a lot of pastors celebrate when they get, you know, five or six transfer families from another church. Nothing happened for the cause of Christ. Nothing. The Great Commission wasn't go there for and build a big church. And I'm not against a big church, but that's not the biggest thing. We've started churches that are bigger than us by far. And I'm not jealous because it's not about how big a church I get. Our church isn't that big. It's not going to be the way we run it. Unless God does a miracle and chooses for it to be different than it is right now. But, but Open Door, which is our church, Open Door Baptist Church, <clears throat> Open Door Baptist Church is a tool. Most churches are the end. And and eventually, they just, they just continue to build that church. By the way, it's not God building a church anymore. <laughs> a lot of times, they just start building. Yeah. They just start building a church. It's, it's an empire. Yeah. Right. And, and, and they're not, they're, and, and so they, they're, they're stuck, and, and they're not reaching the world. <clears throat> Got this huge church. Most people guess about 25,000. I'm going to stick with smaller. I'm going to stick with about 15,000. And it's doing great in Jerusalem. And they're, they're doing well. They're adding to the church. And that's the phrase it keeps using here. And more were added to the church. And that's what happens locally. That's what happens to this church, to our church. If Hopefully, praise God, we get added to. And adding is nice for a church. That's, what, that's good. Praise God. But that's all they're doing is adding. Okay? And so they're just, they're just, they're just, they're just getting bigger and bigger. And then all of a sudden, God says, we got we to gotta get out of Jerusalem. Acts chapter 8. Let's swing this. <clears throat> to Acts chapter 8. And follow the progression of the church. Now God's going to use an unsaved, to, unsaved tool 
to fix the problem. And his name's Saul. And you'd be amazed how unsaved people can be used in the Bible. They're used all over. All over the Bible. I'm not saying you yoke up with them, but when you're in the right position and following God and submitting to the things God's put in your life, God can use unsaved people to teach you, train you, to help you, to, 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 to do things. And don't think because your unsaved boss is telling you what to do at work, you should not submit to him. Okay? And God uses evil tools sometimes to do things. And, and, and you know, God's powerful and sovereign. He can do whatever he wants. And, uh, and so he goes, and Acts chapter 8, verse 1, Now Saul was consenting unto his death, Stephen, and at that time there was a great uh, persecution throughout the ch- uh, th- against the church, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of, ready, Judea and Samaria. That, remember, it's supposed to go Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria? Now it is. <laughs> Not because they had a burden for missions and, and, and send people out. Because God said, um, hey guys, I know you're enjoying this thing in Jerusalem, but uh, your region's not being reached. It's not being reached. And they're scattered. Verse 4, therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. <clears throat> Awesome. All the preachers are now out there. Uh uh-uh. uh. Look at the end of verse 1. They're all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. <laughs> the laymen were scattered. The apostles were in Jerusalem. So it'd be like all of a sudden, law change in America, law change in Kentucky. And all of a sudden, it's illegal to have church, and they come in and they close this church down and, and start locking people up. And they're looking for you, and they have your address. They get the church membership role, and you have to move. And now you would go and start winning souls wherever God puts you. Well, what, what time is preacher going to set up the soul winning time? You're not going to be around the preacher, you're a Christian. You have a Bible. You love Jesus. You love souls. And that, that isn't because you go to church here. That might stir you to go to church here. It might help you to learn what the Bible says about that. But that's, that's Bible stuff. You, you're, you're supposed to go soul winning. You're supposed to love people. You're supposed to reach the world. And that's what we're all supposed to do. And so now the laymen are scattered. And they are going throughout the area. Um, <clears throat> we see in verse 5, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria. Okay, there he is. And preached Christ and then the whole city gets saved. And he's out there winning souls. You can follow all these things um, in chapter 9, verse 22, Samaria. Chapter 8 and verse uh, 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip and said, Arise, go down towards the south, which is the way that goeth uh, from Jerusalem into Gaza, which is desert. And there's the Ethiopian treasure. And that's heading south towards Africa. By the way, um, North Africa is all Muslim except for Ethiopia. Okay? We just had, we just had an Ethiopian saved uh, last Saturday. And uh, e- Ethiopia has been Christian since they don't know when. Ethiopia has always been Christian. It's, 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 it's Coptic, as they call it. But they've been Christian the whole entire time. They don't know when it started. There's no re- historical record. <laughs> it's Ethiopian eunuch. Okay? Nobody even knows how through the six and, or the seven and eight hundreds they stayed Christian with all the Muslims killing everybody. But they, they, they did. And this guy goes to Africa. This convert. Okay? And, and so now we're going south. Now we're going north. We're going that direction. Ch- chapter 11 <clears throat> and, uh, and verse... 19, it says uh, this, um, Now they which uh, scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose uh, about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus. Cyprus is an island in the Mediterranean. And Antioch. That's going to become important in a minute here. Preaching the word to none but the Jews only. Okay, that later we're going to get to chapter 10, chapter 12, where 
it, they understand that it's going to the whole world, um, and, and, and they get that. So now they're, they're going, and now they're scattered. And they're getting farther and farther. The laymen are getting farther and farther, and they're preaching the word, and they're winning souls. And they get as far as Antioch, which is pretty far north, all, all the way up, and you're about to go into Turkey up there. And, uh, and, and they're, they're past um, Jer- Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. Now they're farther. Now they're getting the uttermost part of the world. Why? Because God scattered them. God scattered them. And, and, and so now they're way north of Samaria. Chapter 11, <clears throat> and we see verse uh, 21. Now let's read about Antioch. Uh, and, and the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great multitude believed and turned to the Lord. Then tidings of those things came unto the ears of the church, which is at Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he had came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exhorted them that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, okay, they're in Jerusalem. Scattering happens down, down south. They're, they're going all around Judea. Up north, they, get, they hit up here to Antioch. They get to Antioch, and they win some souls there. And then somebody sends a message down and says, hey, we got a good group of believers up here in Antioch. Church Jerusalem says, oh, okay. Let's send Barnabas up there to, to disciple these people because they don't really know all they're doing. They need, they need to establish in the faith. They need discipleship. Barnabas goes up there. Grabs a buddy and takes Saul with him. Paul now, who's saved now. The guy who started the whole trouble. Okay. And now he's up there with him. And they stay there a year and a half, I think it says, with them. And now this church in Antioch matures. Okay. And now you've got a mature church up in Antioch, which is pretty far from Jerusalem. And right in the gateway into Asia. Okay. You're getting out of the Middle East here. Okay. And now you got this, this important church here. How, how great is this church and how uh, amazing is this church? <clears throat> well, it says that they were called, uh, they, 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 they were, well, let me take you to Acts chapter 13. Now these were the, uh, they were, well, let me go to verse 2. Um, and they, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, and said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed, they laid their hands on them and sent them away. The Apostle Paul is now sent. God tells the church, by the way, tells the church, hey, separate these two. They're called to ministry. They, 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 they lay hands on them and they ordain them. And Paul and, and Barnabas go out as missionaries. And where do they go? Up into Asia Minor, first trip. They come back around, report back to their church, the, the church in Antioch. Not, not Jerusalem. Jerusalem's doing their own thing. Antioch is also doing something. Why? Because they've multiplied. Okay? And now they've multiplied. And then second trip, they go back around, and all of a sudden they get up into Asia, and he gets a Macedonian call, and he jumps over into Europe. And he goes to Philippi. And now... He's in Europe. Eventually, he gets to Rome. And the gospel gets to the end of the world because they divided in order to multiply. But one church just getting bigger and bigger and bigger is not going to do that. It's not going to do that. But what you have to do in order to do that, guess what Antioch had to do? They just sent out their best two people. And that's where the pre- preacher's like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's great, man. I'm not losing brother so-and-so. If he's not here, we can't make it. He does so much. He is so good in the ministry. Ding, 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 ding. You say, but if we, if we sent out our best people, our church, what would he do? No. See, Christians all around the world are bored to death. And they don't need God. They need God. Okay? But they don't know they need God because they have a job. God is nice to them, give a job. Their life's secure. It's all good. They can go to work every day, pay their bills, come to church on Sunday, preach your preachers. What do you need God for? Where's 
where do you need God? I understand without him we can do nothing. I get it. But he's already provided those miracles. And now you're sitting there not needing God anymore. The all church is secure. We can pay our bills. I'm, we're good. Yeah. Where's my spiritual recliner? And, and, and you, get all, you get all relaxed. When it went, the first, so I started, <clears throat> so I, I leave our church. And when I first started doing this, I, I, I have no assistant pastor. I got laymen. And, and I've, I've went them all to Christ. I've discipled them. They don't know another church. They've, they've, they're not churchy. They don't know. They don't even know. I, I always laugh. I said, I, I said you know, I, when I'm in a, another country, I have no contact. I'm, I'm, I was just in the bush of Congo two and a half months ago. I ate rats and all kind of stuff. And, uh, and, and, and they don't have that in any of your restaurants, I guarantee you. And, uh, but it was fried, so it's good. Amen? We're in the South. Anything fried is good. And, uh, and so, we're, and so <clears throat> I go tell our guys. I walked up a guy. I said, look, I'm going to be gone for two weeks on Sunday. You're going to preach Sunday morning. <gasps> I've never preached for a pastor. I know. But you know what? You just need to pray about it. God will take care of it. I'm not going to be here. You've got to preach. I can't do it, pastor. I can't do it. I said, okay. Well, then nobody's going to preach anyway. Um, you're, and you're going to do Sunday night. Yeah. A big, strong man starts shaking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm, I'm out of town. I mean, they can do anything. I've never, I, they, they don't know how to do church stuff in our, in our church. They're, they, they've never been in the church stuff. They don't even know how to vote me out. <laughs> And uh, they don't know anything. And so <clears throat> I'm not going to give them our constitution. They'll figure it out. And, uh, and so this guy, I'm telling you, his wife comes to me. His wife, he is so scared. You, he's in the Bible every single day. Pastor, I can't find a sermon. What am I going to do? He said, God's going to give you a sermon. Just pray about it. Man, I go off in the country. I come back. My, my wife picks me to the airport. So-and-so did so good. I walk up to the guy. Guy, here's the guy here. Inevitably, say to me, Pastor, you wouldn't believe it, man. I was shaking. I was scared. I was thinking about it all the time. I prayed, and all of a sudden, I just got something from the Bible. And I get up there, I was shaking, but I was praying. I fasted, Pastor. Can you believe that? And I got up there, and I prayed, and like I'd never prayed before in my life. And I got up there, and I started preaching. It was like God took over. And all of a sudden, it spoke to people I could yeah. see there was impact in them and pastor it was awesome can I do it again because yeah. they needed God finally yeah. and they spent time with God Good. I live me I live over my head all the time I need to need God I'm way too lazy I'm way too uh, if I'm if I'm just where it's easy and I don't need and I don't need God I'm just a slouch as a Christian, just to be honest with you. Wish that weren't true. But I need to need God all the time. And God always puts me over my head. I'm thankful. Where I don't know how or what am I going to do or how am I. I look like a fearless leader in front of my people. We're going to start a church in Timbuktu. Timbuktu Baptist. God's going to provide. I'm going, what are we going to do? What did I get myself into? Lord. And that's great. Because that's what they live like in the book of Acts. And they're multiplied. Look at Acts chapter 9. Let's go back a little bit here. So God's stirring your pastor. He already has a heart for missions. He's already been and done some things. And now God's plopped a, a, a thing on his lap. Not on my lap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's, it's a big deal. Good. Emmanuel Baptist Church is going to have to step up. Uh, chapter 9 <clears throat> and verse, uh, oh, let's see, 31. Uh, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and, and uh, Galilee uh, and Samaria and were edified, walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Ooh, that goes a lot faster. Chapter 12. And 
And verse 24, and the word of God, God grew and multiplied. Awesome. We started a church. God, God put a, a crazy project in us, on us. I oversee right now five churches. That's pretty typical. Um, our church I pastor and then churches we've started. We oversee them until I think the pastor is ready and is financially able to take care of itself, and then we let it go. Um, we don't let it go until the pastor. We, sometimes a pastor will go crooked or something. So it's our church. We oversee it. That's the way we do it. You can do whatever you want to do it. That's how we do it. <clears throat> and so, so I think we have five right now that I'm overseeing. And, and, uh, and, and so we, get, we got this, this project in the Philippines, and it's, 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 it's just a crazy project. And God put me in the Bataan Peninsula where the death march was. You know, the, 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 the Bataan death march, you've heard of that? Filipinos and Americans were marched to their deaths. So we, we started the, the Bataan Life March, okay? And the Filipinos in America bring the life of Christ to the Bataan Peninsula. And, and we went to a city, and this city, and I, I've been all over the world, but this city was so open. I mean, weirdly open. Like, can I please get saved? Can I please get baptized? Can I please follow Jesus? And, and, and where's the church? Give me the hours. I'll go to all the services. I mean, it was just insane. And, and, uh, <clears throat> And so, and, and then from that church, we've started, we've used that church. We trained the workers. At eight months, they came to me and said, the teenagers came and said, Pastor, we've got a Bible study going in Abu Kai, and, and can we start the church there? And what, what are you doing in Abu Kai? I didn't tell them to go there. But they just got a Bible study to go together, and we had a, a guy who was an assistant pastor said, I want to head this up. And so we went and, and, so we went and started that church in Abu Kai. And the first Sunday, we had about 130 people. And, uh, and and went and started that church, and and so I so in that main church, in our main in, in our main church right now, I just got an update from the pastor, and I said how how are things going and stuff like that, and and so our main church, which is in a city called Orion, you would say, um, um, in that main church in La, in October November they had 147 people saved and 23 baptized, Open Door Baptist Church, Orion Baton. I wasn't there. Our church wasn't there. We didn't do any of the work. We started it. We were there. I preached a first message. Um, we, we, we funded it. We, we did all the stuff. Do you understand? The church, that North Abukai is up there. Balanga is up there. Manivelas is there. We're starting, and we're going to start one in a city called Bacac, and another one probably in another city in Marivelos, or another one in, in, in Balanga in March this year. We'll go probably start two more churches there. And they'll, if God wills and if God works it out, and he doesn't have to do anything, he's good anyway, but if, if he does and things go like they've gone, they will be winning souls from our church, and I won't be doing anything. Because it's multiplied. And that's the Bible pattern. Start in Antioch. And let Antioch go start sending out Pauls. And Jerusalem's going, hey, goodness, that guy up there, what, that, what's his name, Paul? Where'd he go to? Yeah, your, your children are having children. If you went, <clears throat> if you went and started today, you won one soul to Christ this year. And that one soul became a soul winner enough to win one soul. So first year, you got two. This second year, you got four. In to reach the entire world, if every person, one person a year would win one more person a year, you would win everybody on earth to Christ in less than 30 years. One convert winning one convert. Because multiplication works very quickly. One, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, hundred twenty-eight, two hundred sixty-four, two hundred uh, five hundred sixteen. Help me, and uh, and and you keep on going, and and it starts multiplying, and so what I'm saying is, praise God, you guys are growing. You have to expand the building. Woo! Awesome. That is so you can become a more effective tool. And, and do more. And some of your best people might have to go. And you got a great pastor to train them. And then he says, I tell our people, can you believe this? I tell our people, I said, look, if you're going to this church, I just want you to know I might need you on the mission field. And so you need to be prepared. 
and not hold your life here on the, in your, your work situation so tightly that if I say, we need you to go oversee a church or we need you to go help this missionary who's discouraged, I need to send you there for a month, you're willing to go. I said, if you don't want that, don't go to this church. Because we're, we're, we're about the Great Commission. We're not about Open Door Baptist Church. And so they multiplied. <clears throat> the problem is always laborers, Matthew 9, 37 and 38. The harvest truly is plenteous, the laborers are few. And in Acts, we find out that God makes laborers out of common laymen. And your pastor, God's using him, and he might have to get sent off more. I know I've, I've done these projects. And not this one. This one's, by the way, I go to the third world. He goes to the Caribbean. I don't quite get that. <laughs> Lord, send, I'm going I'm I'm to help the Bahamas. And, uh, and, uh, and, and so, good plan, brother. I should have thought of that. You know, I, I, got, I got the Caribbean. I, I, I got done a bunch of things in Haiti. That's in the Caribbean, but that's a little different. <laughs> but I just want to say, it's so exciting when, when you have Emmanuel Baptist Church in some other country, it doesn't have to be named that, and all of a sudden the church you guys started, because you went with Pastor to help start this church. And he reads a prayer letter, and your church that you started, it's Christ, we know that. But that church, and, and some convert of yours is still in that church, and that church is winning souls, and all of a sudden they birth another church. And you have grandkids. It's pretty awesome. But that's multiplication. And, and they were supposed to do that. That church is supposed to do that, but they got stuck in, man, we are tearing it up. We're 15,000. And man, look at those miracles, and this is great. God said, you guys are a big blob right there. Because you are in Judea and Samaria and uttermost part of the earth. And you've got to reach those people and do that work. And, and it's a wonderful thing when we get past just having a big church. And all of a sudden the world's being reached. And I'm still learning and I've got a long way to go. But God is good when you follow his plan. And so our little church, which isn't that big a church, 140 people maybe. I run them all off. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, they, they have churches, they've planted churches all over the world. And our people go. Our people go. I say, guys, we're starting a church over here, and we need somebody to go with us. And, and we'll, we'll send, we started a church in Anchorage in 2020, in the middle of COVID. <clears throat> we sent our people, we sent three groups of two up there for a month to go soul winning before the church started. And, and, why? Because it's too hard for one guy to just go and do all of it. And so, so, so multiply. That's my challenge. Just the Bible said it tonight, and I'll leave it to Pastor. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, thank you for your good plan. Thank you that you just show us the way it's supposed to be done. Help us to do so, Lord. And thank you that your way works so well. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are your ways higher than our ways. Thank you for this church that has a heart for the world. Thank you they've already done a lot of this, and, and uh, I know they've already trained some men who are doing some great works and we thank you for that and i pray you'd use them and i pray that we would um, just realize that uh, we got to divide to multiply and and to help this church lord i just pray you'd anoint this church as it's being moved into a new level i pray uh, that you would just use it in a mighty way and uh, make it so effective that the devil fears this church and what it's doing for you we pray this in jesus name amen did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.